to another edition of the Everlast Power video series. Today we're looking at the Everlast Power Ultra 205P. This is the third edition in the series and we're going to be looking at how this welder actually performs in welding and cutting. Today we're going to be stick welding, TIG welding, and plasma cutting. Some uh, well welded up plates that I've gotten from the local welding school and I'm going to be cutting them apart. We're going to be reusing the plates later on for TIG and stick welding. I've got to cut these welds apart first. Now this may be anything that you do in a typical day where you've got to cut out welds or you've got to cut off a piece of uh, material that's broken or something. And this is a really good way to demonstrate the unit to you. This is 3 8 plate that we're going to be getting with. And actually probably by the time the weld is built up it's almost a full half inch. So we're going to be cutting this old weld out and reusing these plates just for uh, today's demonstration. Before we begin, we're going to look at the plasma torch. This is a blowback start pilot art torch. This torch is used by several different companies throughout the United States and it has a consumable that is in common with them. That means you'll be able to find them locally available in most areas. What you just saw is an example of the pilot arc. Now the pilot arc is not a cutting arc. Rather it's an arc that will scour the top of the surface of the metal so that the continuity can be made between it and the work clamp. We're going to set this unit up now to cut at about 40 to 45 amps. Uh, this plate's about a half inch thick with the weld. Uh, the plate itself is actually 3 eighths, but we're going to be cutting down the center of it. It's going to be a good workout for it around 40 amps. just as you see it after it fell. Now, there is a little slack here, but a lot of that's due to the, uh, the presence of carbon and stuff that was trapped in these bad welds that the students had done. So what we've got here is a weld that's at the thinnest 3 8 and the max about maybe 5 8 of an inch. This was all done with uh, 40 amps and about 55 pounds of air pressure. Now, if you find that the arc goes out on the plasma cutter with your pilot arc, then you've probably got too much air pressure and you're actually blowing your arc out by the air pressure that bounces back up and hits the arc. I'm going to take this plate and the plate that fell from this plate and clean them up. Then I'm going to stack them together and we're going to cut a 3 quarter inch thick cut with this unit at 50 amps. cut in half. These, this is the matched edge here. You can see this uh, dross right here on the bottom. Uh, for three quarters of the inch piece of metal that's not a bad cut. Um, it's a little bit of dross but it's easily knocked off and you can use it. But overall the cut itself on the edge is uh, fairly clean. We're going to take these two plates that we've cut up and we're going to weld them together with our TIG. Now we use a WP26 torch here. The WP26 interchanges with the consumables from a WP17, a WP26, and a WP18 torch. The 18 is a water cooled, but the 17 and 26 are air cooled torches. Now any of our units can be modified to accept a smaller torch like a WP9 or WP20 torch. That's not a problem. Uh, it's mainly in the connector end. You've got to have a DIN style connector for the unit, but that's common with many other brands as well.
Okay, we started off about 70 amps down here, and we ended up about 85 right here. We need a little more heat to get a little more penetration, so we added a little more in, and I compensated by adding a little more filler here. So this unit does very well just on basic TIG. We're going to make one more little pass here, just a little short pass, and we're going to show you how this unit operates on the built-in pulse. Now the pulse is a, a, a set it and forget it type pulse. There's not a lot of adjustments or parameters, but you've got a slow pulse and a fast pulse on this unit. The first section here represents the low pulse uh, at 120 amps. Now you can see we started off pretty decent and started on it and then I switched to the high part of the pulse here at the same amperage. And what we ended up with, we started ending up with a, a cooler puddle and I, I actually had a little incomplete fusing here then I kind of picked up what was going on and then made it better and about right here I stopped and then I turned the amperage up to about 160 and then we smoothed on out really well down to here and then I turned the pulse back down and the plate had already gotten hot so we welded just a little bit under 160 with the slow part of the pulse right here so how can we use the pulse to our advantage if you're welding on something real thin you can turn it on the low pulse and if you start getting too much penetration turn it over onto the high pulse and leave the amperage the same and in the same vein, if you're getting too little penetration, drop it down on the low pulse to improve your penetration. Um, if you're looking for weld appearance, either part of the pulse seems to give a pretty nice weld appearance. Uh, the slower pulse will give more separation in the ripples, but the, uh, the higher pulse will also give a little finer separation, but give a really nice weld contour. With the Power Ultra and most of our welders, we're currently using a stub type holder. This is a very simple to operate one, although it may be confusing the first time you use it. To operate it and insert an electrode, your electrode goes here. You have two jaws. Simply twist your head here and it opens your jaws so that you can insert your electrode. Then twist your handle or your head back and it'll hold it tight. To angle your electrode, simply just bend your electrode in the direction that you'd like to weld. We're going to begin with a 6011 rod. Typically the 6011 rod has been called a rust rod, but it's very similar to the 6010 with a little less penetration but a whole lot more arc stability. This is the end result with the Power Ultra 205P with a 6011 rod. You can see the separation in the puddle resulting in a stack of dimes look. Next we're going to compare the 7014 and the 7018. We're going to make a half a pass with the 7014 and a half a pass with the 7018 and we're going to compare the flux and the arc differences.
we started with the 7014 and went to about here uh, before we changed over to the 7018. Not quite halfway, but you can see the slag color difference here. And you can see the slag starting to release a little bit right here where it's cracking. Notice over here in the 7018, you can see the slag cracking as well. The slag should release fairly easy for both the 7014 and the 7018. But typically the 7018 is going to have a very easy to release slag if you're welding at the correct amperage. The 7014 may be a little more stubborn depending upon the brand. The Power Ultra 205 welded both very well. We're going to knock the slag off now and we're going to show you the weld underneath. The 7014 and the 7018 are both good rods. Now the 7014 you're going to travel probably a little bit faster than the 7018. And the 7014 does not have the storage requirements of the 7018 so about anybody can use a 7014. A 7018 is going to need a rod oven to keep uh, the rods dry and keep the low hydrogen rating that the 7018 has. Uh, the 7014 can be uh, just kept up on a shelf out of the way fairly dry but it doesn't have to be heated. If you're going to buy a Power Ultra 205P don't forget that it is also a great stick welder.